Welcome to the Arabesque Sewing Studio and to video 4 of the tutorial series for the Sewing Space Station. Now in this video we'll be assembling the whole base of the space station by sewing the front tool panel to the front. We'll be preparing the flaps and we'll be binding the whole station. And now we're ready to sew the flaps that are going to go on the very top of the Sewing Space Station. And there are four of these. There's a flap A, there are two flap Bs and there's a flap C. And I have included uh, a woven interfacing and a fusible fleece, the same as we have put in the uh, base mat. And this just really helps this uh, keep its structure. And adding the fleece into the flap just gives it a really cute little bit of puffiness. And what you need to do is fuse these into the center of the piece here. So this is going to leave your quarter inch seam allowance here and just keeping this out of the seams just helps this not to be bulky and just gives it a really nice crisp shape when you turn it the right way out. So if you're not familiar with fusing um, something like this, I'll just give you a little demo. So it doesn't matter which side you put which one on, you can choose uh, whether to do your fleece on the exterior or on the lining or vice versa, that's all fine. I'm going to actually put my woven on my exterior. So just you're going to eyeball this and center it as best as you can. This is going to depend on how accurate you've cut it and if you haven't cut it terribly well, that's okay. So you can fuse this directly on top of it. So just make sure that the rough side where the glue is, is facing down and that you're doing it on the wrong side of the piece. So then you just put your iron on and hold it in place. Just hold it for a few seconds. And then just have a little check that that's held in place. And if it hasn't, I'll just flip it over and give it a bit of a second press. A little bit of steam sometimes helps. So then that one's all ready to use. Now, when it comes to using fusible fleece, you can't press this directly on top of this because this will melt and stick to your iron. So what I like to do is just center it on the wrong side here. So make sure that your sticky glue side is facing down and then grab it and without moving the fleece on the top, just flip it over and then you're going to press it from the right side of the fabric. You can give it quite a long time if you like. Move it around as you go a little bit. And then just check how well that's fused. And if that looks like it's stuck really well, that's fine. Otherwise you can give it another blast. And that's how we fuse this. So you can go ahead and fuse it to the rest of all the other pieces. So now we're ready to sew the flaps together. So you're just going to take the corresponding flaps and place them right sides together and align all the raw edges. And then just put a few clips around just to keep it all together. And repeat this for the second one. Now it really doesn't matter which side you stitch this from but I do recommend that you follow the accurate quarter inch seam allowance on your sewing machine rather than on the edge of the fleece or the interfacing because uh, typically this all does just shift a bit even if you've cut it out as accurately as you can um, you'll end up with it being a little bit skewy if you follow the stitching line along the edge of this so it's all right if some of this gets caught up in the seam, uh, it won't be very much. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch around these curved edges and we're going to leave this straight edge open on all four of these flaps.
So now we've got these flaps all sewn together, you're just going to go ahead and just trim down your seam allowance by about half. And this is just going to reduce some of the bulk of the layers inside. And then you're going to flip this around the right way. Just reach inside and just make sure that you're getting that seam, that stitching line on the seam right on the edge getting that curve nice and round and if it's not you can just reach your finger in and just do a bit of a scrape with your finger along the edge of that line and that's going to greatly help just smooth that all out and just get you a really nice smooth edge there so when you're happy with the way that's looking, just going to hit that with your iron. And do it again from the other side. And what you're after is that when the exterior is showing, you're not going to be seeing any of the lining poking out from underneath. So you can go ahead and top stitch along this edge if you would like to do that. Um, and sometimes I'll just leave this um, untop stitched if that's the effect that you're after. And today I'm actually going to do the top stitching on this version. And yeah, so I'll show you that one when we get to it. So just go ahead and trim all of your flaps down. Before we go back to the sewing machine, whether you're going to top stitch this edge or not, you will need to be basting along these raw edges, along the tops of all of the flaps. Okay, so now we're ready to attach the pockets to the base section and these are going to be uh, the way we close the pocket sections that we've stitched in uh, to the panel here. So you're going to want to take your flap A, which is your smaller of your two longer flaps, and to take your flap A and we're going to align the raw edge of flap A with the raw edge of the top of the mat and we're going to centre this over the channel that we've got here for the pocket. So we've got the left hand edge and the stitch channel that we've done here or we've got this pocket opening. We're going to centre that and then I'm just going to move it just a fraction to the right because we're going to have binding that's going to take up a little bit of this space. So we want it just off centre there. And then I'm just going to grab a couple of clips Clip that together, do three if you like. Then you're going to take one of your E flaps, and this time we are going to centre this between the two channels that we've stitched here. So just eyeball this, you can get out your ruler and measure it if you'd like. So align the raw edge of the flap with the raw edge of the mat here, like a couple of clips in. Okay now grab your remaining flap B and we're going to centre this on this section here. So we've got the stitch channel down here, we want an equidistance from the top of the binding here between this part as well. So we're going to align the raw edge of this flap with the 
raw edge on the mat and clip them together. And lastly, you've got the little C flap, and we're going to align this between the bottom sewn edge here and this channel. And line up those raw edges and just clip them in place. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to baste along the raw edges of each of these flaps. I'm just going to trim off this corner that's sticking out from the curve here. So now your mat is actually ready to put aside. Uh, we've still got the snaps to put in and I think we will do that at the end. And we'll get on with the tool panel that hangs down the front of the machine. So now we're up to the part where we're going to sew the front tool panel onto the base. And so I'm just going to be showing you uh, that we're going to sew it onto the right hand side here. If you've been following along and you're planning on making the left hand version, you're going to be doing everything on the other side. So we're going to just turn the base so that it's facing us as it would be when we're sewing it on the sewing machine. And we're going to lay the front tool panel right sides down and align these raw edges here and make sure that this top edge is lined up along here. And just grab some clips and just clip these edges together so we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew this seam at a quarter inch seam allowance so now that you've sewn this seam the next step we're going to do is just very carefully snip just at the very end of the top pocket panel here. We're just going to snip into the base up to that line of stitching but not through that line of stitching. So just make sure you're doing that very carefully. You're just going to be snipping into your base. Now that little cut there is going to be part of how we hide this seam nice and neatly and how we bind the whole uh, space station nice and tidily. So the next part that you need is to grab some of your bias binding and you can use uh, the same binding that you've been using um, for the whole uh, space station so far but if you would like to hide this join and make it just a little bit more invisible you can use a coordinating uh, binding that's the same as what, what you have on the reverse and because I don't want to particularly bind in denim because that is going to be very bulky I'm just going to use uh, some nice space space themed fabric that I've got here. So whether you use the binding that you have already cut out or a new piece, you're going to need this to be cut at one and a half inches wide. And then we're just going to press that in half, just the same way that we have for the rest of the bias binding. Just going to grab your base back again. And directly over the seam that we've just sewn, we're going to clip this binding down this same edge. Now we want about a half an inch overhang. So you can just cut that off just about half an inch or so longer than the end of this top pocket panel. And I'm just going to fold it back exactly level with the edge of that top pocket panel. And as I do, I'm going to just angle that fold just a little bit so that these edges are actually sticking out um, into that seam allowance amount there. And I'm going to clip that and just, just angling that is going to help hide all those ends 
when we flip this over and sew it the other way. So we're just going to take this to the sewing machine and sew on top of the first line of stitching that we've already sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. So now you've got this seam sewn, we are going to do some seam layering here just to reduce some of the bulk here. And so now I want you to just trim down just the front pocket panel, the seam on that by about halfway. So you just fold those layers back as best as you can, keep everything out of the way and just trim your way across there. So now we're going to open this out and flip this round so that it's facing this direction. So now we've got the reverse side of the space station facing you. We're going to fold this binding back, and give it a really good push down. And I'm just going to grab my iron and depress that down. So you want all those layers going to towards the base. So everything is going up towards the base here. And you want the little bit that we turn back here on the binding to be nicely tucked in so that you're not going to see any of those raw edges when we stitch this down. So this little part where we snipped is still going to be facing the front so you want to make sure that none of that is getting caught up in this seam here and that all of that is sitting nice and flat the only thing that we're going to be stitching down is the binding. Now this part uh, where we stitch this down, you can either top stitch this and you will see this stitching on the front. So if you would rather just have a seam line here and no extra line of stitching, you can actually hand stitch this down for a nice invisible finish. And if you don't mind having that extra layer of stitching up here, um, go right ahead and sew that down. So you can either pin this down uh, with some pins or you can glue baste which is of course my preferred method of doing it. Anytime I can get away with not using a pin I will do that. Of course you don't need much glue. So 
just grab your iron and set that in place. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along the very edge of this binding. You'll be noticing that this is getting quite bulky now so when when you're sewing a particular section of it just fold everything else up and tuck it out of the way so that um, it's not going to be dragging and pulling on your stitching. Now I do apologize I didn't catch this part where I was stitching this binding down on camera. You can see what I've done here I've just sewn along the edge of this binding but I changed the color of my thread so that my top thread was navy to match this binding and my bobbin thread was the same peachy color as the base here so that's something that you might like to consider is um, whether you want your stitching to show and make sure that you've got it matching if you would like a different color so now this is the base actually completed um, apart from binding it so we're just going to put this aside and we're going to um, construct the closure ties that we'll use to fold this up and tie this up when everything's packed away inside of it. Now I do apologize I think in the beginning when I told you about all the pieces that you're going to need I did omit the fabric for these closure ties. So you're going to want to cut uh, the lengths of fabric for your closure ties uh, from the fabric. Again, if you need to join any of your pieces here, we're going to do this just the same way we did with the bias binding. Um, you're just going to take the second piece and lay it right sides together, perpendicular to the first piece. And then we're going to stitch from that inner point to this inner point on a 45 degree angle. And when we open that out, going to get a join that after we've trimmed it and pressed it looks like that. One length that you have here and we're just going to press this in half wrong sides together and then you're going to open it out again and you're going to press under a little hem on one short end and then we're going to press each of these long raw edges into the center here so I'm not going right into the center I'm going fairly close to it but the point is to be as consistent as you can with your pressing so that you'll end up with a nice straight tie. So go ahead, flip it round and press the other side to the wrong side as well. And then just go ahead and press that back in half and all those raw edges will be nicely enclosed. Now, one of my favorite ways uh, to hold all this together at the sewing machine is to glue baste it. So you might have noticed when you're trying to sew these little raw edges in, particularly at the end, you'll find that these little ends like to poke out a little bit. So just grab a little bit of glue just on each of those inner pieces and then just tuck them in just so that they are within that seam allowance there and not sticking out. Give that a good press with your fingers and then put a little bit more glue just on the end and press that down with your fingers and that is a really good way of holding all those layers together. If you want, you can glue baste along the whole length of this now. But I find that just uh, starting here and going around and along 
is actually sufficient often just to hold everything together nicely. And now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew this uh, closely along the edge. And then I'm going to go across the bottom and all the way up the other, other side so that I've got stitching on all four sides. And you're going to repeat this with your other short length here and repeat the whole process for each of these long lengths of tie as well. So we're going to attach the ties to the base now. So you're going to open your base out and have the bottom facing upwards, which means that the front tool panel will be over on your left hand side if you've assembled it the way that I'm doing it. So you're going to take one of your long ties and one of your short ties. Make sure you've got the two raw edges. You're going to place the short tie on top of the long tie and align these two ends and just pinch those together and then we're going to measure down from this top right hand edge three and a half inches and we're going to align those ties over that mark just grab a clip and clip that in place and then take the remaining two ties so just stack up the raw edges on these short ends, place the short tie on top of the long tie and we're going to measure up from the bottom right hand side three and a half inches as well. So you just clip that in place. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to base these ties in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now we're ready to bind the whole of the exterior of the space station with binding. And I've just gone ahead and just pinned these ties uh, down to the base so that they're going to stay out of the way and I won't accidentally catch these as I'm sewing this. So once again, you can choose to sew your binding from the front and then flip it to the back or from the back and flip it to the front. It's really up to you. And today I'm going to be sewing it onto the front and then flipping it onto the back. So if you're going to sew it onto the back and flip it to the front, you may wish to also pin down your flaps if you haven't already or you can go ahead and set your snaps in and this is a step that I haven't showed yet. So if you'd like to just wait for me to show you that, you can just go ahead and pin these flaps down so that they don't accidentally flap around and get in the way as well. You're going to take the remaining length of remainder length of binding that you have. And I'm going to start actually on this side here. So I would I prefer to start on a nice long straight edge or a nice long straight edge here. So I'm going to leave about a 10 inch long tail of binding here. I'm going to start pinning about two thirds of the way down this long side. I'm going to put a clip there and then Just go along here and clip this in place. Now I do put just the tiniest little bit of stretch on here, but as I come to one of the curves here, 
I'm actually going to be not stretching it, I'm going to be almost pushing it back on itself and easing it round this external curve here. So we don't want to have too much stretch here because if we do, when we flip it to the other side, it's going to be really tight and it's going to pucker and pull that corner in in a not very attractive looking way. It's going to be very, very um, tight. So once you get around the corner, you can go back to stretching it a little bit again. Now I've got a little bit of binding sticking out here so I'm just going to trim this off level with this edge and any extra little bits of threads that are just getting in the way just trim them off as well. So just work your way along. Now as you come to another external curve, I'm just going to ease the binding around the curve without stretching it. So you're probably going to end up with quite a few clips here on each of these curves because this just really helps hold that exactly where you want it to be. So don't be afraid to really load up your clips. Okay, so we're coming up to this internal curve and this is probably the trickiest part of the whole project is getting your binding nice and neat on this curve. So my favourite tip for handling this is actually like we did uh, when we bound this curve here is to just snip about an eighth of an inch into this little curved part. You'll see that there's another snip there that we did when we attached the front tool pocket. So when we get to this part, I'm actually going to be stretching this even more. I'm just going to go and get some more clips. Okay, so I actually want to be straightening out this part of this curve so that clip my binding to it and get it nice and snug. Now the trick that we want to make sure is that this snip here that we did where the end of the tool pocket ends, we're going to be actually covering that with binding. So this is 
the other part that makes it tricky. So you straighten this curve out. You want to stretch your binding just a little bit here. Okay, so that's the trickiest part pinned there. And then we can just go along and pin the rest just like we did on the other straight sides. I'm just going to clip this better. So I will stitch my way all the way around here and I will stop a quarter of an inch away from the end here, fold this back, fold this over at a 45 degree angle. Then I will keep going along this side and I will stop about 10 inches or so from the clip where I began. And then I will come back and show you how I join these ends together. Okay, so you can see I've got the binding all attached here and I've left an approximate 10 inch or so gap in the middle here with a nice long tail on each end. Now just before I show you how to join it, I thought I would just go into a little bit more about how I grade my seam allowance as I'm going around to cope with the different thicknesses that we're going over because when you're sewing, say, just this section here over the front tool pocket, and it's just the single quilted panel. You've got one thickness there, but then when you've got the second pocket on top of it, you've got uh, two thicknesses here, which is going to affect how much bulk is going underneath the binding here. So what I like to do as I'm going around is if I'm going over several layers, like we are on the flap here, and also as we're going over the front pocket panel, I like to sew with a scant quarter inch seam allowance, which means I just sew just a smidge less than a quarter inch. And then when I'm back just to the single layer, like we are along here, I will go back to a normal, um, normal quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll find that that is very effective for getting a nice even turnover so that when you do flip this to the other side you'll be able to cover your stitching line and that extra bulk isn't going to get in the way and and that extra bulk isn't going to mean that um, your binding isn't going to cover on the other side okay so let's join these two ends here so essentially what we're going to be doing is joining these on the bias just like we have for all the other joints, but we're going to calculate the correct amount so that we can get a nice bias join that fits beautifully and snugly. So you want to open out both of your ends here and you want to just pick a point roughly in the middle and just mark that on the seam allowance on the base here. And you're going to take one of your ends and it doesn't matter which one going to lay that over and line up the edges here and I like to just give it just a tiny bit of a like a, a tug I'm not really stretching it I'm just pulling it taut and then I'm going to mark again 
directly on top of that first mark that I have here. So I am going to add to the right hand side of this mark one and an eighth inches extra, longer than this mark. Then I'm going to snip that off. Now you can move that out of the way. Now referring to the same mark that we've marked here on the first on the base going to stretch this just a little bit and I'm going to mark directly on top of that mark and then I'm going to add to the left hand side one and an eighth inches and then I'm going to snip the binding just straight across like so. So now we have two ends here and they are now the right length to join on the mitre now this is where you can't actually um, beautifully join your stripes. It's just going to be whatever it ends up. So if you know of a method where you can join your stripes perfectly, uh, like we have on all the other joints, and you know how to do this, you can leave a comment below. I would love to know. So you're going to open out these ends and you're going to overlap them. And you'll see that this is going to be quite hard to sew like this so we're going to have to pull and bend everything so that we've got enough play in this binding to be able to get it underneath the sewing machine so you're going to overlap these like so and then we will be stitching just like we did before from one side to the other. So I like to grab my pins and pin on all four sides of this joint just to hold everything nice and flat. And then I will also rule a line from corner to corner and sometimes if you can't see the corner you can just peel it back and mark with your pen. So you just rule a line And that's going to take all the guesswork out of this now so you can take this to the sewing machine and stitch along that line that's going to join a beautifully neat join that will then mean that the binding is going to sit snugly and finish off the edge okay so now we've got the seam sewn and if you weren't sure which way round to overlap your ends then it's not too late to do a dry run and just open it out and you'll be able to see if this is sitting snug or not. So now we can open it out again and trim off this little triangle. Now if you want to you can take this and press this seam open. Now I'm just going to use my fingernails. So just going to open this out, grab your clips and clip this into place and Then you can sew this down between where you started and where you finished and that will be the binding stitched on the front. Okay so now this is all bound and I'm just going to get 
keep it a little bit of a press. Just quickly, this is up to you of course, but I like to just even out any of the binding that might have warped a little bit. And then I'm going to start flipping this to the other side. So on the long straight edges I will once again open it out, give it a press just to try and get that nice and even on those longer straight sides. This is the, just the first, first pass around. Let's push it into that curve a little bit. Turn this around to the right side. Got some little threads there to trim off. This is looking so pretty. I'm really happy with this. And it's really satisfying when you can see place where you've joined as being really smooth and bubble free. That's just so satisfying. So I'm just going to press this one around as well. Okay so now we're ready to flip it to the other side and then we'll tidy up this corner and press everything over to the other side. So now you're ready to go ahead and flip all these down with binding clips or you can glue baste or you can hand sew this down, whatever is your preference. I'm going to go ahead and glue baste all of mine and then I will be flipping this over to the right side and stitching in the ditch uh, from the front side. So now I've got the binding all stitched down and I'm just really, really loving how this is coming together. I just think the stripy binding really pops and the space fabric with the little pop of floral here is amazing. So the next step we're gonna do is go ahead and set the snaps. So you're going to need to take your interfacing and so now I've gone and got my binding all stitched down and I am just really really loving how this has come together I just think the stripy binding really pops and the flaps with the little bit of floral together with the techie space stuff is just a really nice statement that it's making. So we're going to go ahead and set the snaps on the, the flaps now. So you're going to need to grab your interfacing templates and just poke a hole right through the dot where the snap placement is. Then you're going to lay that directly on top of the flap here and just line up 
this bottom curved edge and you're going to mark a dot through that hole there right onto the fabric and then you're going to hold your fingers underneath the template and very carefully poke a hole without going into your fingers right through that flap just being careful not to um, poke a hole in the fabric below not yet anyway we want to make sure the hole goes where we need it to go so after you've got a decent size hole there you're going to put your fabric pen through that hole and you're going to mark below that keep checking that it's gone through onto the top pocket panel and this is going to mark where the opposing snap is going to go so you're going to put your hand on in underneath and hold those layers apart and very carefully poke a hole through the whole of the top pocket panel but not through the base and without poking yourself you're going to make a decent size hole okay so that's the first one ready to place the snap now if you've never used cam snaps before they are very basic to install I've got some my buttons here as well just need to get all this out of the way so you've got three parts here you've got two spiky pins here and these are going to be what goes on the top and also what goes right underneath and they hold the rest of it together so you need a pair of them you're also going to need a socket and you're also going to need a snap and these two go together and they won't oh they do snap there you go didn't know that they do snap now so you when you have the opposing pair you'll be able to put them together and snap them together and you also need your setter tool so this top pin part is going to go right through this hole that we've poked here and just wiggle it with your fingers until it's come all the way through and you can feel that it, the snap is right up against the fabric there and then you're going to take this top snap part and place that on top now these are not going to stay together by themselves you need to hold them there and then you need to take your rivet setter or your snap setter and this black part is going to go over the flat part of the pin side and this goes other side goes over the socket part and you're going to squeeze really hard and what's, what that's going to do is flatten that pin that's coming through from the top and that's what holds the snap in place and you should be able to feel that that's nice and firmly there it's not wiggling around so that's the first part done so now we need to reach inside and put this remainder of pin into this hole which is going to be very hard to show you into that hole and wiggle it carefully until you can feel it come right through all of the layers nice and snugly and then you're going to take this remainder socket it's going to turn this around so holding this together you're going to place the flat part underneath on top of the flat part of the pin and line this all up and squeeze and that will squish the top of the pin and set that snap nicely in place and then you can snap them together and they should be nice and snug and meeting exactly nice and flat so you're just going to go ahead with the remainder of the interfacings poke holes through mark the places and set the snaps like that
So now this top is completely finished and I just absolutely love it. And I thought I would just share with you some optional extra decorations that you can add. So I have a little leather tag here that says so more stress less, which is my one of my arabesque uh, mottos. And I'm going to put this probably about here, I think, just for a cute little extra bit of decoration. And something that I've really been wanting to try is to add some rivets. So because this pocket is loosely based on a pair of denim jeans and the way the pockets curve around and layer up like um, you may have recognized I'm not sure but that's where this inspiration came from so just the way the jeans are riveted I have thought it would be really cool to um, put some of these at the junctions here and just give it a bit more of a jeans look so I'm considering adding some of these extra little touches and you can add uh, your little tag on any of these seams or sections that you would like to display it on so yeah I'd really love to see how you're going to label this yourself and all the little touches that you would like to add now the very last step we need to do on this space station is attach the buttons that the cargo bay is going to hang from so you need to measure down from this seam where the front tool holder hangs and you're going to measure down seven and a quarter inches and this is going to be the position that we attach the buttons to so I've got these two really sweet uh, red buttons that um, are transparent and have a really nice shape to them so I think these are going to look really nice on the front of this so you're going to need your needle and thread I like to take um, a fairly good length of thread because we're going to double this over so just thread your needle and knot your end So I've got a good size knot here and if you'd like a video on how to tie a very simple two second knot here um, you can find that on my YouTube channel. So I've got a nice big knot here and I've just trimmed the tail quite close to the knot here. So I'm going to show you a technique for attaching your buttons and if I just grab this other station that I've got here. So the way that I've attached these is I don't want them sitting super tight against the fabric here. I actually want them to be quite floppy and I've actually got a bit of space between the base, under the base of the button. And so this is called adding a shank to the button. And you'll see this on uh, clothing that might be quite thick, like a thick winter coat when they attach the button where there's a lot of thickness of fabric to go around. Um, they will have a shank around the button to account for that extra thickness to go through so the button can still function very easily. And because we want some elastic to loop around this we've got the same issue. So I'll be showing you how to make the shank on the button so that your buttons are nice and floppy but they're not loose that they're going to fall off. So you're going to want to come in on the back of your station here and bring your needle in between all of these layers and then just come up right next to that mark might take you a few goes to wiggle your needle around where you want it to be but basically right on that mark that I've just marked on the inner edge of the binding here You need to bring your needle in from the back and place it in between those layers and then bring it up right next to that mark that you've made on the inside of the binding. Might take you a few goes to get it up where you want it to be. There we go. So just pull your needle through 
and then we're just going to give this a little tug on this thread and just bury that knot nicely in between those layers here. So just grab one of your buttons and you're going to bring your needle up from underneath through one of the holes and then back down through the other hole. I'm going to turn this again. This does take a little bit of manoeuvring, particularly trying to show it on camera. So you don't want to get your thread twisted. You want to bring that down so that you've got that coming in one side, up through the hole, over the top and back out the other side. And then I'm just going to pick up just a little bit of fabric here. And the amount I'm picking up is the same width as those holes on the button are. So this is going to vary depending on the particular button that you've got. I've just brought my needle through just those top layers of fabric. I don't want anything showing on the back here just through the top and I'm going to pull that not super tight just snug and I can't pull it tight actually until I've come out through the top again so now I can pull it a little bit tight just slightly tightly certainly not yanking really hard on this thread here but then I'm going to come back down through the button I'm not going in the fabric just yet just through the button and then I'm going to lift it up so I can see my threads underneath again. And I'm just going to come back in and grab the same amount of fabric again, right next to where I stitched the first time. Bring it three and poke it up through the button. Bring it over the top. Then lift it up. So I can see my stitches, pick up a bit more fabric, pull that through, back up through the top. And you're going to do this about four or five times so that this is nicely secured. So I'm just going to do one more, just picking up just enough, up through the top, down through the bottom. Okay, so this is the part where I'm going to form the extra thickness under the button so that the elastic can fit nice and snugly and securely in there. So you're just going to take the thread that's coming out from there and wrap it two, three, four, five, six. About six times or so around the base of that stitching that you've done. That's going to form a little lump of thread under there that's going to give you a bit of space that means that this is nice and loose but not going to fall off it doesn't mean that it's not sewn on well and I'm going to bring this back through all of the layers and I'm going to tie a knot that I can bury back inside through all of my layers so just thread that in on top of that knot, poke it through the layers but not through the front and give that a tug until that's nicely buried. You can just trim that off. So that's how we stitch a button with a shank. So now you've got your buttons on, you can grab your cargo bay and just loop those loops of elastic over the buttons and now this is all ready to hang in place when you've got this under your machine and you can open it fold back the flap and you can access whatever you've got in here whether it's clips or thread or maybe you want to use it as a thread bin uh, just to put all your little tails in but yes this is so cute. I love it so much.